So now that we have everything all set up and we want to do some animation on Electra, and I could turn it on and I could be using uh, some of our sets and just posing Electra in here and setting her in the chair. Um, but uh, to save some time, I've already done that. So I already have a file here that I've set up. And you can see uh, it's all set up the same way, except that uh, you know I'm doing the set first and then doing Electra and then going into something. So I just have a very simple animation here. It's just every five frames, uh, just with my blocking, just of Electra standing up here. So I could copy this whole uh, network in and paste it into the other one. Um, but because we have our same selection sets uh, here uh, set up, what I can do is I can select that set, have all the channels in there, select the curves, hit Control C, and now what I can do is I can go into uh, the file that we have no animation in, and I can just select the set, and since it's the same set, we know that it's gonna be uh, the same curves. And I just do Control V, and now I've just pasted that animation into uh, this file. And you can see now I have all with my every five frames uh, just done in there. So it's a really quick way to be able to copy and paste animation from one scene animate uh, to another. And of course, we're working on our pose and animation library, but until that comes around, that's a little tip to be able to uh, set up a file if you want with uh, some hand poses. You can copy and paste those poses around uh, as needed. Now, for here, if I wanted to, uh, we could take a look at um, some, if I want to focus just on this area here, what we can do is if I just shift select um, in the bottom with the drag it over, what I could do is right click on that and I can create a bookmark. And you can see it creates a bookmark with that range that I just did. And we'll just call this test. And you can name it whatever you want and put some comments in there if you need it. And what this allows us to do, if you have a, especially if you have a really long shot of, say, like a thousand frames or something, you just want to focus on one area. Instead of changing your range in here, you can just have your bookmark set up and you can just double click into there. And now you just focus on that one area. So it's really quickly to be able to just focus on the areas that you want and double click out when you want to go back out to uh, the entire area. And so uh, if you right click on the bookmark, there's also a bookmark editor. So if you have multiple bookmarks, you can change the colors in here. Uh, you can change the ranges, display if you want to see it or not. So there's a, a bunch of things that you can do in there with the bookmark editor. Now, if I wanted to take a look at this and I wanted to do an animation, uh, a flipbook of this, all you can see is over here, we have a flipbook. And if I right click on that flipbook with new settings, there's a bunch of settings that we have. Um, the start and end here will just give me the range uh, that I already have in here. So one to 100 that I have set up. And there's other things you can have some fake motion blur. Uh, and for the size, I'm just gonna keep the size right here. And what I'm gonna do is just hit start. And what this will do is this will generate a flipbook for me of just that animation going through and we're going to get the whole range. There's a whole bunch of extra frames here that you see uh, that we don't need all these hunter frames here. So the one good thing about the bookmarks that we could do is if we wanted to only work on that uh, one little area here, what I can do is I can double click in this. And now when I actually just uh, click on this again, here, let me uh, just do something. Let me just, just so we could see, um, see something changing here. I'm just going to uh, set a key here and just do this just so we can see the difference in there um, and now when I hit this it's only going to play through that uh, one area so I don't have to spend all the time doing all this re flip booking everything I can just flip book the new area and it'll go right into that uh, one spot so it saves time from doing flip books when you want to do everything in there and now I'm just going to uh, disconnect this. And now when I do any other flipbooks, it won't go into this file. So I'm going to hit disconnect there, do it. And then let's just hit control Z. So we're back to our normal uh, animation. And if I double click, we're back out. Now we have another uh, feature that's in here that uh, it's actually been in for quite a while, um, but it's called end play blocking. And what you can see here is if I go to my output, I can um, do check off this scope channel keyframes only and enable block editing. And now when I select Electra, if I select her Electra block, uh, now I, with all those keys that I have, uh, those channels and control scoped that I have, now when I hit start with this, what you can see is that it'll generate a new flipbook, but it will only be 
those frames that I have. So you can see it's held in there. So it's uh, basically just uh, giving me a flip book uh, with my keys and held there. So if I want to, I can switch this to be 100. And now what we can do is if we wanted to, we could slow things down a bit. So if we wanted to make it so as she's getting up here, that's taking a little bit longer, struggling a bit more, we can just select that range here. You can just uh, <clears throat> middle click on this and then drag the end out. Now we've just started uh, changing it there. We can grab this area here, start moving around and you can do a lot more in here uh, I'll just go through this quickly but now you can see it's taking a lot longer to get up and even if we wanted to do something where we uh, just have a little delay at the front of this um, to take a little bit longer before uh, she stands up we can grab this and move this around so really quickly and you can see because there's no frames before it's just gonna hold it and and uh, do it there so really quickly we're able to start moving our keys around and start retiming our animation just with a few keys and just dragging things around um, and it's not affecting anything in our scene this scene is fast enough that I could actually do the same thing in here um, we can move it around but then I'm changing my animation as I go along so with this, I'm able to try a bunch of things. You can be sitting down with your supervisor um, and, or lead and looking at it, seeing if how the time's working. If you're a pose to pose animator, you can actually just set keys one to 20 um, in a row, just with all your poses that you know you want. And then you can start retiming it out here. But now that we have it all here, say this was exactly what we wanted. What we can do is put these all back onto our keys and adjust it. So if we go to animation, export blocking, now when we click on that, you can see it's actually changed all my keys down at the bottom here. And so really quickly, I've been able to change everything on there. Oh, let me put real time on. And now I've been able to retime everything and then put it in and move the key. So it's a handy little thing, especially for blocking, if you want to just start retiming things uh, quickly. And then you can put it on, get your keys moved for you, and you can continue working from here. So um, from here... What we're going to take a look at next is we're going to take a look at some of uh, the animation layers that we have. Now that we have our animation, we've kind of delayed it a bit, so there's a little bit more. Now we can start working on adjusting this using animation layers.